I'm two minutes older. I'm an inch taller. I've been carrying him for 37 years. Twin brothers who took a stand for their faith and lost their TV show. Well, they're here to talk about life's highs and lows. Plus, the volunteer who's empowering women in an unlikely way. You understand that. Yes. And you are beautiful. All on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. A North Carolina woman became a mother in an unexpected way. She adopted the baby of a pregnant woman she met on an airplane. 24-year-old Samantha Snipes was expecting a baby boy and was leaving an abusive relationship when she happened to sit next to Temple Phipps on her way to North Carolina. Samantha and Temple hit it off and exchanged phone numbers. And a few days later, when Samantha went into early labor, she called Temple for support. Well, Temple arrived at the hospital and unexpectedly was asked if she would adopt Samantha's son. Well, Temple dreamed of becoming a mom and already met with adoption agencies, but was having difficulty because she was a single woman. Samantha knew Temple would be a great mother to her son and has never second-guessed her decision. Well, Temple named the baby Vaughn, and the two celebrated his first birthday together and have become close friends. And that is a wonderful story. What yeah. a plus for Vaughn. Yeah. Two women who two, love him. Two, <laughs> two moms, two right? <laughs> exactly. You know, strangers on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of airplanes, Brianna DePriest and her now husband Robert planned a trip to New Zealand for their honeymoon when Brianna's sister Kelly realized that she was going to be on their connecting flight. Kelly saw it as an opportunity to plan a surprise wedding gift, one the couple would never forget. Well, with the help of United Airlines flight attendants, Kelly got passengers to write well wishes to the couple by passing out goodie bags with a card, chocolate, that's an important part, and a note <laughs> that read, my sister and her new husband are on this flight on their way to their honeymoon. If you can write a piece of marriage advice or life advice and pass it up to seats 8A and 8B. Thank you, kind travelers, and I hope you have a fantastic flight. Well, Brianna and her husband were taken back by the personal and very meaningful surprise and enjoyed reading all the great advice that they received as they <laughs> headed off to New Zealand. Don't wow, spot the a, small stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Very good advice. Put your spouse first. Yeah. <laughs> Great idea. I mean, how fun. <laughs> Great wedding gift. Well, a single mother of five is going viral after posting a graduation picture that encourages others to never give up. 33-year-old Aisha Champs never thought she'd achieve much as a child in and out of the foster care system who dropped out of high school and then had her first child at age 19. But fast forward five kids later, and Aisha is about to graduate from law school. She says a word from a woman at church changed her life. The woman told Aisha that God wanted her to go back to school to get her GED so she could eventually follow her dreams and become a lawyer. Yet it was a dream that Aisha had never shared nor thought possible as a single mom. Aisha's thankful to that woman, her five children, and the Lord saying, God said I can, and if God be for me, who can be against me? So many things have come at me to defeat me, but no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I would be nothing without God, and all praise and glory goes to him. He brought me to and through my trials and tribulations and stayed with me all along the way. I'm a living testimony of what God can do. There is power in the name of Jesus. And amen for that woman Boy, in I church guess. who gave the word to encourage, to build up. Uh, that's what we're supposed to do. So often, you know, we, we have an yes. image of church as a place where we're going to hear a, a lot of negative things and thou shalt nots and that kind of thing. But the church needs to be a place where we build one another up. And what an encouraging word to say, I know your thoughts. I know your secret desires of your heart. And here's what you need to do to take the first step. Yeah. yeah, and she did it. And five beautiful children. Boy, you'd love to track her story and see where God takes her next. He's obviously got a plan. <laughs> There's a courtroom <laughs> somewhere for <Yes>. Aisha. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Well, a Connecticut woman is on a mission to empower women through beauty. It's not all hair and makeup, although that plays a part. But take a look. For more than 15 years, Tanisha Achenloy worked at making people beautiful. Then she saw the light. 
beauty is is God. You know, that's my definition of beauty. It's a divine beauty. It's beauty that can only come from God. Tanisha realized that her calling was so much more than just giving somebody a beautiful hairstyle. It was also about transforming the way they saw themselves on the inside. What would it be like um, if I could make my clients whole and complete? From that point on, what became my mission is to help people rediscover who they truly are. And it all starts from the inside. That led Tanisha to start her foundation, Empowering Through Beauty, which took her out of the salon and into homeless shelters. She and her volunteers go on a mission to find and serve those in need. I know the difference it makes. I know the difference it makes whenever you have a job interview, but you're living in a shelter and you can't afford a haircut. And while the makeovers happen, Tanisha is most interested in these women's hearts. The beauty comes from inside. If you don't know that, then just yeah. what we did today, it's not going to matter. Okay. You understand that. Yeah. And you are beautiful. On any given day in the Bridgeport, Connecticut area, over 1,000 people are homeless. Empowering Through Beauty offers programs to help women get back on their feet and holds events where they receive access to services like job resources and HIV testing. In one day, we provided over 300 services for uh, women and families. I feel... Beautiful for the first time in a long time, you know. I kind of just gave it a try. I let my guard down. Usually my mother does my hair. <laughs> and uh, just something to empower me. We partner with salons throughout, uh, where, wherever. Whoever would like to get involved with our foundation, we partner with them and we are able to send our clients from our uh, partnering shelters to be able to go out to the salons in their community to get their hair uh, service. To date, 99% of the women who go through the Empowering Through Beauty Women's Shelter Program go on to receive housing and employment. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Bridgeport, Connecticut. That is a wonderful thing to do. You yes. know, Terry, I've, I've got a war story. We were doing relief work into Piatas, the, the trash dump, dump. Yeah. and uh, um, uh, some makeup artists came to me and said, we'd love to go on, on wow. your missions to the trash dump, and we want to give them makeovers. And at the time, I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, these people, yeah. it's a dollar a day, substance, uh, you know, they don't even get enough food. and. Well, they're you know. digging through other people's food just to right. find a leftover hamburger. This is in the Philippines, by the anyway, way. Uh, I finally got talked into it. And yes. I was like, okay, is this going to work? You would not believe the transformation. Yeah. You, know, um, you know, you can go with food, you can go with livelihood programs, mm -hmm. but until that self-image changes and to see the faces when they saw themselves in the mirror yeah. for the first time and the recognition that, I am beautiful. I am somebody. It's it is empowering. And it, sometimes, sometimes there's something also when you're in a very isolating, poverty-riddled scenario like that, just to have a human touch that's gentle. You know, that somebody's saying you're valuable. Right, and awesome. somebody cares. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna get you looking good. Great and idea. Was, yeah. Great idea. Well, coming up, former professional baseball players David and Jason Benham. The tw twins share about life's highs and lows and how their childhood dreams gave them the fuel to live their faith boldly. You don't want to miss them. That's up next, right after this. Well, twins David and Jason Benham grew up with big dreams. So when they found themselves in the center of a media firestorm, when HGTV canceled their reality show, Flip It Forward, they knew that they needed an even bigger get they needed an even bigger trust in God. I'm two minutes older. I'm an inch taller. I've been carrying him for 37 years. At least I could hit a curveball. Dude, you could not hit that curveball. Many of us came to know the Venom brothers after they were fired from HGTV due to their biblical values. Getting thrust into a media controversy was not what David and Jason had in mind. But these former professional baseball players and nationally acclaimed entrepreneurs 
drew strength from an earlier time in their lives, when God stepped in and blew them away with His faithfulness. In their memoir, Miracle in Shreveport, the brothers share how God made their lifelong dream a reality by working behind the scenes in a very special way. Well, David and Jason are here, and thanks for being here. You guys are just known for boldness. You, just, <laughs> you don't hold back. Well, thanks for having us, man. You're bold yourself. Oh, I don't know. I can't hold a candle, you guys. You got a book out, Miracle in Shreveport. One of the things in reading the book, every time I turn around in this book, or every time you guys are turning around in this book, you're on a baseball field and you're praying. Yes. Does that yes. attract attention or what? Well, you know, it does. It attracts attention for God, from God as well. And, you know, it's funny because in this culture, a lot of people ask the question, does God really care about sports? Mm. Does he really care that all those NFL guys get to the center of the field after the game? Or does he really care when a baseball player hits a home run and gives God glory? What God really cares about is our heart. And he is always faithfully writing our story into his story. And this book that we just wrote is, is really just that. It's, it covers a 20-year period of our lives. Long before we ever made it to HGTV or any of these other things, we had a story, a testimony, where God was working behind the scenes even when we couldn't see Him. And it, and it details our dream of wanting to play professional baseball together. All right, David, tell me about the answered prayers. How, how, did things, how, did, how did those prayers in center field get answered. Well, you see, our dad raised us to love the game of baseball, and he was our baseball coach back in the 80s when he wore those tight coaching shorts and a fishnet hat with his <laughs> socks yanked up to his <laughs> kneecaps. And, uh, and so we always loved the game of baseball. Our goal was to get scholarships to play baseball at college and then play mm -hmm. professionally. But specifically for he and I, we wanted to play professionally on the exact same team in the exact same stadium, a stadium we happened to have a dream along with our dad we shared in Shreveport, which was the, it was the Shreveport captains, the double A team for the uh, San Francisco Giants. And we would pass that field every year on vacation and our dad would pray with us, guys, maybe, let's pray that one day God gets you to play on that field in that stadium on the exact same team. And that, got, that prayer got answered. It did in the most miraculous way because I ended up getting drafted by the Mets out of high school. Jason didn't get drafted. So that crushed him. Really? And it crushed me, believe it or not. We're going to get all emotional here. Now. <laughs> oh, what a sissy. But then, I can tell how crushed you are. Th that's right. Then we, went to, <laughs> we signed baseball scholarships at Liberty, and we played yeah. there, and I got drafted again by the Mets, but Jason didn't. Well, we ended up finishing college, and I got drafted by the Red Sox. He got drafted by the Orioles. Well, in the middle of all of that, Jason then breaks his leg literally in half, the old Joe Theismann injury. Oh, wow. So now his career, oh, wow. it looks like it's over. He ends up rehabilitating, but then gets released. And so the dream is over. Not only is playing together in Shreveport not going to happen, but he's not even playing pro ball. Well, I got traded to the St. Louis Cardinals and convinced him to come watch me play for the last few games uh, in the 2000 season. So one night, Jason is sitting there in flip-flops and shorts, the very next night, he's on the team. And you got to get the book to find out how that happened. So that's a tease. <laughs> there you go. But the really cool thing, Gordon, is that that night, Jason ended up pinch hitting. He hadn't seen a live pitch in four months. He got a base hit. He hit a double off the wall. He, yeah. he but, acts like it's, it's it some was, miracle well, that I got a hit. It was, no, that's the miracle. <laughs> that's not the, book. the miracle. But, you know, I bet it was a curveball. I was a great I don't hitter. Know what it was. <laughs> it was luck. But anyway, no. The, but so we're, we go back into the clubhouse, and the reporters are there talking to Jason at his locker. And the coach comes in, and I, we hadn't even looked at the schedule. We were so excited that he was even on the team with me. The coach comes into the clubhouse and says, guys, everybody get here at 9 a.m. tomorrow. We'll load the bus. We're going to Shreveport. Mm. And he and I were like, what? We hadn't even looked at the schedule. We had no idea. And then just immediately we look back and we're like, oh, my goodness, if Jason didn't break his leg, he wouldn't have gotten released. If he did, wasn't released, he wouldn't be here. And so, I mean, it really shows that God is on the all throne. Working all things together. That's right. Well, all things and you can together. trust him. Talk about your dad. I mean, here's, he's your coach but then he doesn't let you play on Sunday. That's right. And, uh, and at first he didn't let us play. And then of course he brought us into the decision. Mm. And you know, we were raised and we're doing this with our kids too. Uh, it, it's not about honoring the Sabbath in terms of you know, Sunday being the Sabbath. Of course, you know, the Sabbath is Saturday anyway. 
it was. Oh, was, you can be Sunday too. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, you, can be you would know this better than the I. Apostle John said it was the Lord's day. I Amen. Like it. Yeah, yeah, I but it was the, what, <laughs> the angle that he taught us was we're fasting baseball on Sundays because uh-huh. you need to recognize. You know, fasting is denying yourself in the physical so that you could gain something in the spiritual. And you know, in America, our faith really doesn't cost us a whole lot. But when you don't play a game that you love, you're denying yourself in the physical so that you can gain something in the spiritual. We learned how to pay a price for our faith early in life so that when the the time came when HGTV fired us for our beliefs and everything, we recognized we've been down this road before and what we're gaining in the spiritual is far greater anyway. Why why do we look at it as we're sacrificing when, when really, I mean, Jesus said it, the Sabbath is made for us. That's right. Um, and it's, it's designed to improve us. It's designed to strengthen us. Yeah. Right. But we tend to think of it, well, you know, why can't I go shopping today? Or That's right. Why or, can't I just, you know, do whatever I want today? Or especially in today's culture, we are so hyper, uh, the hyper idolatry of sports. Mm-hmm. I mean, we played travel baseball. We wanted to get drafted. We wanted scholarships, which is what all these parents say when they give their entire weekends and two and three games on a Sunday where they're not going into church or getting a chance to lock in with a local community uh, before the Lord. And, and so Jason and I really encourage, as we travel and speak across the country, we encourage parents, we say, listen, you don't have to have your kids playing on Sunday. Show them to give it up so that God has actually given that day to you and it will rejuvenate you. It will bless your family. And ultimately, that scholarship that you want or if you want to get drafted or whatever it is, God will take care of that. We've seen it in our own lives and you can see it in yours as well. Amen. Amen. What's next for you guys? Real estate going well? We, we, we've still got our family of companies. Mm-hmm. We're, we're growing those. Um, we're traveling the country, speaking a lot right now, and really encouraging Christians today in our culture because a lot of them seem to be getting a little discouraged. But we're seeing a groundswell. There's a remnant rising who are saying, you know what, no matter what happens in the culture, I'm going to stand for Jesus. I'm going to represent his truth no matter what happens to my reputation. David and I get a chance to go speak to Christians all over the country, encouraging them to keep standing strong. And one of the messages uh, that this book, when you get done reading it, where no matter where you are in life, whether you're struggling with a marriage or finances or you have a wayward child or there's something tough at the office or even the cultural situation we're in morally and spiritually, we know that God is on the throne. He hears our prayers. He is the sovereign ruler over the realm of mankind. He is writing your story into his story, and you can trust him. A- Amen. Any TV in the future? <laughs> we don't Unless know. Unless it's, it's you with know, you. You're going to source it out of Shreveport? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be great. All right. Well, Miracle in Shreveport, it's uh, available wherever books are sold. And thanks for being here. It's hey, great having you. Having yeah, us, man. yeah. God bless you guys. Yeah, thank you. All right. Terry, over to you. Well, still to come, this model made it to the top, but it came with a price. I don't think I ever felt good enough. I knew that I had to keep the way that I truly felt under a mask. See how she found her true worth and identity when we come back. Jennifer Strickland was discovered young and soon became one of Armani's favorite models. Jennifer thought she was living the dream. In reality, she was living a silent nightmare. My diary was my voice. It was the way that I could speak. I had friends that were cheerleaders or prom queens or volleyball players, and I was not that. I just wanted to be like everybody else. I didn't dream about being a model but it was this place where I was accepted. I knew that I had to keep the way that I truly felt under a mask. I don't think I ever felt good enough. I built my career on TV commercials and catalogs. Then when I graduated from college, I started to do the runway. I spent my whole life to get to that stage. And when I got there, I felt so empty. I looked around at all of the girls behind the scenes. You could see every rib down their backs. You could see their longing to be approved in the way that would lean into the mirror and lean into the camera. And I became so uncomfortable in my own skin to the point that ultimately that made me sick. 
And I thought, well, I have the Armani shows. I have the approval of the king of fashion. I'm fine. But I would go home and I would write on the pages of my diary. They were this record of this conversation between my body and my spirit. My body having to be something that it was never going to be, which was perfect, and my spirit saying, I want to be free. Models don't speak. <laughs> you just wear the outfit and take the picture. But I had this longing to say something. I tried to fill the emptiness with everything our world says is going to fill it. I'm standing on the stage of Armani Studios, and he notices that the, the waistline is not hitting me the same. I've gained about three or four pounds. But he can see it, and he was like, oh, no, no. And my agency was angry with me and disappointed in me, and my job started dropping off, and my career went on a real downhill spiral. I ran. I went to Rome. And it was there in Rome that my backpack was stolen. And I realized that my bright yellow diary was in the backpack. I started to cry. I thought, you know what? I don't even know if God is real. I don't even know if you hear me. I don't know if you see me. But if you do, will you at least save my diary? It was like somebody stole my voice. And I just wanted to know that someone would hear it. One day, I went on a walk in the park and there were some people handing out Bibles. They barely spoke any English, but they looked into my eyes and they seemed to care. I started reading that there was this wide road and this narrow road. And the wide road is easy and everybody's on it, but it leads to destruction. And then there was this narrow road that leads to life. I'm walking down this really wide road one day into the center of Munich. And as I'm walking along, I'm holding my little portfolio and suddenly this man just stops me in the middle of the road. He was really sort of out of time and he says to me, you know, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm going to a casting. And he said, my dear, you cannot sell beauty. You cannot sell your face. Turn around. Go to Zugspitz. It's the highest mountain in all of Munich. But then go home. <laughs> it was like he gave me courage. He said, you're worth more than that. And so I turned around. And I took my little good news Bible and I went to Zugspitz. And I laid down in the snow and I gave my life to Christ. When I went back to my apartment, there was this little brown package on my doorstep. And inside was my yellow diary. Somebody found it 300 miles south of Rome under the sea on a train. I knew that God heard me. And I knew that God had a purpose for me. When I left, I was the caged bird free. I was going to find what I was good at. I was going to have my own dreams. I had so much resentment. And I went through a long period of forgiveness. God has helped me to release my past. And I am not defined by the fact that I was a model. I am defined by my Heavenly Father. I had to lose my value to find it. And I found it in Christ and in the pages of that little Good News Bible where he said, if you're broken, I love you. And if you're lost, I adore you. And if you're possessed, I can free you. And if you're sick, I can heal you. And if you're afraid, like, I'll be your courage and your king. 
God's Word is full of promises for you and for me. This is one that so fits the story we've just heard, and maybe it fits your story as well. He'll give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that we might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, so that He will be glorified. The world will promise you many, many things. And often, if we go down that path, I've done it myself, you buy the lie, and the path starts trying to define who you are. Somewhere along the way, you realize, after you've usually made some pretty wrong choices, that it's not who you are, that it's empty, that it's hollow, and you come up with that question, surely there's more to life than this. There is. It's a person. It's Jesus Christ. He came to set the captive free. We're captive to so many things in our lives, but He redeems what's been lost. Even though we've made wrong choices, He comes after us to set us free, to give us life, to give us wholeness. Come to Jesus. If you need to pray with someone today, our line's toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. God loves you and He's waiting to hear from you. So call us. We'd love to pray with you. Gordon? Here's a word from Ephesians. Put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. God bless you.